responsibility, they should be totally prepared. The contractor should, of course, educate and train the worker on their new duties, tasks, and responsibilities. But included in this effort should also be a discussion with the worker about the what if this doesn't work out possibility. You can't cover all the possible bases. I get that. But let me speak just to a few ways to address this with greater confidence and success. One, let the employee know that failure at the new effort does not mark them as a failure. Give them credit for wanting more responsibility. Most employees don't. Two, encourage them that, hey, I will support your new effort. It's amazing how this moral support inspires workers to make the extra effort to do their very best if their boss is supporting them. Three, Communicate to others to buy in to support the worker expanding their belt of responsibility. Hey, let the other workers know that you respect those who are willing to take on more, to risk more. Four, if the worker does in fact fall flat on their face, coach them as soon as possible about their not losing faith in themselves, you, the company, and in their position with your company. And five, if the failure really needs to adjust the employee back to a previous level of responsibility. Communicate with them that this is good and that, hey, you know what? We need winners at all levels of the organization. You at least got the guts to try to take on more. Now, I can't help but to share a technique that I've used personally and have taught contractors across the world to use when they are considering the promotion of a worker to a crew leader's role. This technique can be applied in almost any situation. Here's how it goes. Pre-promotion preparation, or as I call it, the three Ps. As part of the preparation to promote a new worker, share with them personally that you will support them 100% in their learning and adjusting to their new role. You also want them to consider a 90-day trial. This time allows both you and the employee to consider whether or not the new position is really for them. If they determine at the end of 90 days, that they just don't feel good about the increased responsibility, that they're just not cut out for it like they, like they may have thought previously, then their old job is still there for them. Also, at the end of 90 days, should the contractor recognize and feel that the new job just doesn't seem a good fit for the employee, the employee will return to his or her previous role. Now, additionally, part of this 3P effort includes communicating to those individuals working with and for the employee in their new and more responsible position, that the employee has agreed to a 90-day trial. Also, that if at the end of 90 days the employee determines that they really do not want the new role, that they are free to return to their current position with absolutely no bad feelings on your, the contractor's part. This last, last effort is to protect the employee from those who might tease or ridicule the worker if they do fail in their new promoted role. I've used this effort on numerous occasions, and I can tell you firsthand that in, the, in those cases where the promotion did not work out favorably, there was less embarrassment for the failed try. I felt that it was more important to protect the employee who at least had the guts to try to improve themselves over those who are too scared to try anything that might require a bit more effort in thinking. By the way, the construction industry as a whole has been brutal to those whom they've promoted in the past. Rather than allow the employee who promoted to a higher level position and failed to return to a previous level of responsibility, many contractors have separated ways terminating the worker. This is a double negative in that we have just lost a good worker, or at least one that we at one time considered a good worker, and we've proven to the remaining workers that it's not worth getting a promotion unless you want to be fired if you don't produce. Sorry for the extended little presentation here, but, but I think the sixth step is very important for retaining good workers in today's construction companies. As contractors, we must take serious the effort to enhance responsibility, uh, taking from workers without pushing them into a greater role that we may not prepare them to complete or worse, leave them in a boat without any oars to survive the rapid waters. You want to retain workers? Train them, grow them, support them, but certainly engage them in taking on greater responsibilities 
but be strategic and deliberate in your efforts. Good luck.